And we're back. I know you guys missed us. You know, we've been, you know, we were gone last week because my ass was out of town. And you know, T had to work. So that's why we couldn't do it. But Tramel is at a wedding today. So that's why he's not here with us tonight. But however, we're gonna get through this thing now. We um we're doing episode three and four, but Jamar was like we could just do like a quick summary of episode three before we get into episode four. So how about this? For episode three, we just talk about the big shit instead of going down a play by play. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um Okay, so we already know that one of the bigger moments was the aftermath of this whole fight with DeAndre, Kesey, um, Astro, and the friend. Uh, Lundy was just yelling at every damn body. That's number one. Just yelling his ass off as if somebody put their hands on him. Okay, that's the first thing. Um, Dior felt like it was a setup. And next thing you know, Kesey Crew shows up ready to bang too. And then that's when Robert Ray finds out about the fight and he sees that Tedley is shaking in his boots, literally. Thoughts about that? <laughs> Until you go first. Uh, <clears throat> Robert, you was getting on my nerves, boo. All right, I'm just going to be honest with you. Robert, you was getting on the last. Good I nerve swear. that I got, bitch. And I only got one left. And I'm 35. You hear me? <laughs> and you tap dancing all over it. Like, you and this issue that you trying to hold on to with Dior, but then you turning around and saying that y'all used to be roommates. Y'all was tight like that. Like, y'all used to share each other tighty whities and all the rest of that foolishness. Like, y'all was close <laughs> like that. Now, all of a sudden, you sitting over here talking about something you purposely invited uh, your homeboy to come down to the party to check Dior and da 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 Like, you just, you, listen, you are over the place. I don't know what you got going on. I don't know whether you want to be the villain, the the, the trade piece, the the, 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 the fine one everybody want. Like, I, I I don't know. You giving me psychotic and all of the rest of this and narcissistic and, <laughs> and, and, and you, you give it real tad vibes. You give it real tad vibes. Like, and I don't need, don't do that. Robert, okay, please don't do that. That's okay, all I went, got to say. Okay, T went right on into it. He didn't even talk about what but, I what I started this thing off with, but go right on to take take I mean, the wheel, child. Take the wheel. He was making me mad, child. He was he was he was making me mad. Like he he really disappointed me. It's uh I mean since we're already here at the Robert thing. The only thing about this that I don't like is him taking the stance of it's a disrespect to me. Mm-hmm. If you date my best friend's ex, right? Seems to, like it seems to me like it's not anything about you. It's Dior and your best friend, right? If they were best friends, but it you don't look like they, they were best friends at all. It don't look like they were best friends at all. It looked to me like Dior and Robert were were close. You know, they're like brothers. And then he knew the guy, Tony, through Robert. They're not besties. They're not close friends. They just know each other like they cool or whatever. So it's like, how's it, how is it a disrespect to Robert that he is dating someone that Tony used to used to date? And how is it? dealing with Robert. You know what I mean? That's a situation. That's one of them situations where you just stay the hell up out of it because it, it, right. ain't, got no, it ain't got nothing to do with you. And it, it comes across like you picking sides in the situation. This is one of those things where you don't pick a side and you just leave it alone because those two are your friends. They ain't friends mm-hmm. with each other. They know each other. They ain't got no loyalty to each other. They don't owe each other shit. That's how I see it. I may be wrong, but that's mm-hmm. how I see it. Unless, look, unless I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, know, too. I... Unless there's a part that we don't know. Like, we need... It must be something that we don't know, because I don't understand why Robert is so mad and so heated about it. And then, to me, it's like... And, and like I said, I could be wrong, but I'm just going by what I see. And... You just made up with Dior, but now you ready to go in on Dior, and then you bring in this man here to check Dior, and you want to talk about snake shit. That, to me, was some snake shit to bring somebody to confront someone that's your brother. 
So for me, it's like, how the hell you gonna call him a snake and talk about how flawed he is for p- potentially? Because you don't know if he messing with Kesey or not. It's just a rumor. Right. For potentially right. messing around with somebody that your best friend dated, as someone that is close to both parties. Instead of bringing one party to come and confront the other party, don't you think that you should bring them both together in a respectful sense to see what's really going on instead of, because it make you look like you're on some messy shit by bringing him to try to fight Dior. And then you say, well, well, you know, you you know, I, I stopped him from being Dior ass. I stopped him from being Dior ass. My thing about this is you could have just came to Dior and asked him yourself. If he was fucking around with Kesey, that's what I think. A- am I wrong here? Please let me know if I'm wrong. Because I feel like if you and Dior have this close-knit relationship, regardless of y'all going through y'all hurdles right now, you know that this is a group of gays. They messy as hell. And mm-hmm. we don't know what's true and what ain't. So it's like, mm-hmm. go ask your brother, is he fucking with mm-hmm. Kesey or not? If he says no, take that. If he say yes, Okay, we got to talk. Just do that. But instead, you taking secondhand information and you running with it. It's really not his business. And it's really not it's his not. business. Talk about what? Talk <laughs> about what? Like, nigga, we already fucking. There's nothing to talk about. Like, at this, <laughs> like at this, what do you mean? We uh, there, what? What is there to talk about? So I'm just supposed to be now like, oh, okay, you right. I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I mean, I'm that big, but we know how we know how to, how, how the relationship goes around here. We know how that happens. You know what so I'm saying? Are, so I'm, it's I'm like still stuck on you saying we are already fucking. <laughs> yeah, like I mean that's over with. We passed that now. So it's like to talk about what? Like there's nothing to talk about. And if Tony fill away, you let Tony come to Dior and say something, and 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 let Dior get Dior up out of that. You, it, it, I mean, even if he was to fill away about that, what you could do is not let them fight because it's not that serious. It's like it's this really is something that happened, happened four years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know how many was, trade people yeah, got in there? It was in four, four years. years ago, right? It was four years ago. Like, girl, why are you t- really? You mad? First of all, you mad for your? Okay, I understand your friend mad, and you know your friend probably feel away because he know Dior. Dior did his daughter's hair. He been around Dior. They done hung out with each other. So maybe let me play devil's advocate. Maybe he feels as though because they know each other. He should have went to him and said something along the lines of, you know, I fuck with Kesey. You know, we hang around each other, whatever. But I know that used to be your dude. But now I'm fucking with him now or I'm about to. What you think of that? I don't know. I'm just trying to see from our different. Probably not. But at the same time, I I mean, I'm just trying to. I told y'all I'm playing devil's advocate now. That's all I can do. (laughs) Okay. I'm just like, even to anybody with that perspective, so, so would, would that change anything? Like, if he said no, would I, I would have to be like, okay, so let's let's talk about one time. For example. And I just do okay. it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. Like, and Robert, I know you've done it. I know you've done it to a couple of just so don't sit up here and try to act all high and mighty and sit over here and try to act like you got all this more, more fiber and all the rest of this. No, you don't. Let me. I'm try. I'm really trying to try to find a different way to put this. I'm really trying to play devil's advocate here. So I'm trying to find somebody that Jamar is cool with. That that Jamar is friends with, but I'm not necessarily friends with them. I'm cool with them. Who could I use for an example? No, I don't know if there's anybody you can think of uh, off the top of your head like that. But it still is just like even. Like, if y'all don't have a relationship, it doesn't really matter who either one of y'all date. Like, there's so many degrees of separation to where, whichever way you try to put it, <laughs> <laughs> the math ain't math there. It just make Robert look like he got secret animosity towards Dior. That's what it looks like, especially Robert, after y'all fell out. I mean, after y'all made up. There are pieces that Robert and Dior, we need to talk about that. Come up to the show. We got to talk about some stuff. This is things we do. We don't know. I mean, okay, fine. I see what Scotty is saying. Lord Jesus, I, I, fine. I do see what Scotty. 
because no, being honest, because I guess it's from a place of well, him and Tony are friends, and him and Dior are cool like that. So it's kind of like you know, to Tony, it could probably make him start to feel a way about Robert because it could probably be like, well, you knew that they was fucking like this and da 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 and you ain't let me know and said so and so. And even though it's childish and petty and high schoolish and immature and all of the rest of that stuff, we know how people are. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I guess that could be from where Robert was coming from. Like, you know, had you let me know beforehand, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, in, in case it come out or something. Like, I, I mean, I... It, no, I agree with what you're saying. It's just the way Robert is going about it that makes him look just as flawed as he's saying Dior is because you, right. you got to spring this man on him at an event. And then when you know that this dude got some animosity towards Dior, because how does he know that Dior is possibly messing with Kesey? You must have went back and told him after somebody told you that. Instead of just going to Dior asking him if he was fucking with him or not. <laughs> And another thing that I didn't like about the situation was when they was all at Astro's, since we skipping past shit, when they was all at Astro's birthday party and the conversation came up and Sean was basically like, what does he owe your friend? And, you know, you having a conversation in front of everybody, but then you acting like you getting all upset and pissed off because people got opinions. If you don't want nobody to have no opinion, then don't discuss it with everybody. That's how I feel because when I don't want your goddamn opinion, I'm not going to discuss it in front of a group of people. And he was like, "Well, you don't know, you don't know the situation, and so that's why I'm, I'm that's why I'm asking questions to get to, to know to understand the situation." And not only that, when Kesey starts speaking up for himself, Robert dismisses him and say yeah. that he, him talking is irrelevant. It's not irrelevant when he is involved in a situation. The, the whole topic is about him and somebody else. So how is his talking? <laughs> Irrelevant. That's what I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that, that's what you really lost. Me. I was just like, what? I'm, I'm not like, yeah. what are you talking about? And when he cut uh, Kesey off, I was mad as fuck for Kesey because I'm like, if I was at the, if, that, if that was me, I just would have said, uh, Astro, it's been it's been real. Let me get the fuck out home. Yes, yeah. I'm not yeah. doing this. Yeah, I would have just got the fuck up and left because you are not, and I repeat, you are not about to tell me that my speaking is irrelevant when the conversation is about me. You not gonna do that. It's not gonna happen that way. You not. But not only that, KC is the key person that could end <laughs> all of this. So, so it's how you like don't he's think sitting he's there. To the if you. Yeah, like if you really felt the way about that, you got Kesey right there and you got Dior right there. We already heard what Dior was talking about or whatever the case may be. And then here go Kesey and our modern show. All of that could have ended right then and there. But see, he didn't want that to end. Right, because so you right. keep on he going in. Yeah, I, I, don't, know. I, I don't know. I don't like at, at this point, we just got to gotta ask some questions. So Rob, we got to ask questions because there's some things as, as audience members we don't know mm -hmm. so come on with it <laughs> come on with it with the interview that's what i'm saying because i gotta understand it better because baby like you know i'm normally team robber but on this episode he irritated the hell out of me the whole damn episode i'm not even gonna lie to you he irritated the hell out of me then he said that dior started the whole situation no dior did not start the whole situation deandre started the, started the situation when he walked his ass over there and tried to try to check dior and dior put him in his place Mm -hmm. DeAndre started this shit. Like, come on now, come on, Robert. Like, it's like you just have a problem with Dior. It ain't got nothing to do with what we talk about. We got a, it's some underlying thing that's going on that we just don't know. Right, because it's like you want it to be a problem. You know what I mean? So no. Then after that whole thing, let's continue on with the whole um, the shit at Lundy's event because that's what's going to lead us into this episode that just went off. Now, Sean and Tedley had me tickle when they exposed that man for trying to create a storyline, basically too. telling Tedley to throw a drink in his face. Knowing damn well Tedley is not going to throw no drink in nobody's face. <laughs> Why would you say that? Child. He's too much Sean of a rich auntie. Listen, 
It was Sean walking up in there like he was the owner of situations, honey. I was like, <laughs> look at Miss Sean. She better give Rodney T. Shout out to Rodney from Girlfriends, honey. Everybody know my Oh, my Rodney. God, not Rodney. That's what, <laughs> that's what he was giving me, bitch. And he, and, and he read him so eloquently to the point yeah. where I think I like Sean. But see, um... I really want but see, if you could, if if you could ask Jamar when we first, when Trailer for Chasing Dallas first came out, I remember telling Jamar, I said, I think I'm gonna like Sean based off this trailer. I think I'm gonna like him. That's what I'm saying. But then, you know, when the when the episodes first started, I'm like, I don't, I don't know, I'm not too sure. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. You know, Sean, I don't know what's going on with. Hey, Dominique. <laughs> Yeah, they trying to do the real quick on the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that with him, Drew? Is that Drew? Yeah, it's Drew. Oh, <laughs> they're trying to sneak out. Exactly Bitch, we cool. see y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, what was I saying? Because they threw me the fuck off just then. Oh, yeah. Um, I had told Jamal when the trailer first came out, I said, I think I'm going to like Sean. Because it's, it's, it's the fact he said, in this little ass section, that's rent-free in my head when he said it. That, I'm really waiting on it. But I was like, I think I'm going to like Sean, child. But then, you know, when the episodes first started, I'm just like, mm, I don't it's know. Like a, so it, it was a grower. Yeah. yeah. It was a grower. And I'm so sick and tired of Sean coming up in there looking homeless. Like you sitting up in here reading the girls, but every time you get around them, you get oh bad lady God, realness. Honey. Every, <laughs> every time I see you, you wearing jeans with the cut up holes in it and these little shiver, shiver me timbers or, or, or the lumberjack tees with the shirts and all that. It's just, and then you throwing all this shade to all of these people, but it's like, I'm. I really hope this lounge come, DeAndre. Because if this lounge don't come, <laughs> the girls is gonna eat your ass alive, and I'm gonna be all here for it. I mean, exactly. She ain't doing no more confessionals, so y'all can just eat her alive and all you want to at this point. That, right, child. <laughs> that gagged me. <laughs> Lord, That's that saying, gagged not for the rest me. Of the season. It's like I know he probably was giving issues. With in it, but for the whole shit, like it's just done. You get four episodes. Like, like you that much of a coward that you can finish what you started. All that shit you talk, you can't, you can't. Child, because listen, if I was on the damn show, I'd be confessional down. That'd be my favorite part of the goddamn show to do the damn confessions. That's the main thing I'd be waiting on. I want y'all to hear what I got to say. If you didn't hear it in that right. damn room, I want you to know how annoyed you had me feeling in that moment. I want you to know, honey. I really do. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. But, um, I'm dead. I, it's the fact no, that he actually me. did it out of gag. Listen, okay. <laughs> I would have been here for it, little shit. Listen, <laughs> I would have been here for it too, but you know, Taylor not finna throw no drink in nobody's face. So, what did y'all think about the? Well, since we're going into uh, episode five at this point, what did y'all think about the alleged intruder? I thought it was gonna be Kane. Me too. It couldn't have been. The only reason why it really couldn't have been Kane is because they showed him in the beginning. So it's like. But we saw Oliver at the beginning. Yeah. But I guess it's kind of like, if it was gonna be somebody from Dallas, you would show. You wouldn't show them. Mm. But I mean, anybody was up for grabs. Yeah, cause I, 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 cause some people thought it was Reese, and I'm like, girl, I know you did not think it was Reese. Now, I mean, to be fair, as an audience member, if I was just like, you know, a casual, oh, I'm about to say, cause if you know that, what's going on, bitch, you right. know that wasn't none of him. I would say, well, yeah, we know that's not true, but as an audience member, just for the entertainment factor, bitch, that would be the tea. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> baby, they would, the audience would have went nuts, but um. A lot of people thought it was like Ariel. Of course, people said it was King Kane. There was here. a couple people that guessed Oliver, but then it was like, why would he be there? But that's, that was my question. Why the heck is he there? But 
it's just the fact that DeAndre filmed all these scenes and has all this these narratives, and he's not gonna do any more green screens. Kind of like, well, somebody gotta say something, right? And there we are. <laughs> Hold on. Because somebody was texting me about these Boss Baby Boys, child. My bad. Um, Lundy yeah. and his hollering and screaming is just, I can't. I, I just, I, I can't. I can't. We're supposed to be having an adult conversation and we're not having it. I'm like. Instead of his name being Lundy, his name need to be Loud D. That's what his name should be. <laughs> That's what his name should be. Because I, I can't take all that hollering and shit. I just, I just can't take it too much. Just can't take Damn it. Me. Um, I could just imagine him in a relationship, and yeah, it wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Too much, too much yelling and screaming. I couldn't be in no argument with him. He he seemed like the type where he 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 wants to be the more dominant one. He seems like to me he gives me he would want to really submissive, submissive, submissive type of and, and I'm mm -mm, I ain't that type because I fuck around and punch you in your mouth. It would not work. <laughs> All right, and that's that that's just, I, I put that on my mama. So it, it mm -mm, I stay away from from guys like him. <laughs> Listen, okay. <laughs> The problem with Londi is that Londi doesn't have a, or hasn't been given, I'll say he, doesn't, he hasn't been had an opportunity to get a perspective or like a real narrative in the season. Because if you can play out the same story and take him out of it, it would play out the exact same way, just without a loud, you know, what do they, what do they call it? Um, uh, the section that talk a lot of shit. What do they call it? Peanut gallery. Mm -hmm. Having just a loud peanut gallery for the same story. Whereas you can't take Kesey out because Kesey's the whole main glue to sticking everybody together. You know, Dior, Trey got the whole thing going on and we all are into Astro and even Jet Jeff and stuff going on with his family. It's like we don't have a a narrative for Lon D yet. It's definitely episode five, but I mean, hopefully we get a little bit more into his background, his story, what he's right. The only, going on the only narrative that we got for Lon D is that he loud as hell. That's the only narrative that we have. Yeah, that's at this it. Point. That's all we got. When he was brought on, how did he introduce himself? I can't remember. He was brought on through Telly. Like, they supposed uh, to be cool. That's all we knew. Yeah. And I, I thought he did something for, like, offered some sort of a service. Like, he was Tedley something. <sighs> Big brother? I don't know. Yeah, that's the only thing I remember him saying that he was his big brother. I don't think he ever got into what he did, did he? If he did, I do not recall. I don't recall. I don't recall either. I, I'm not I'm gonna, sure I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say he didn't, but I'm 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 also yeah. not gonna say he did either because I don't fucking know. So I mm, child. Anyway, um I guess when they played the games, you know, I guess the conversation and everything, every damn thing else kind of ceased after that. Then they did a toast and shit like that. Now, when it comes down to Astro, was this what what was he looking at? Was it like a um event space or something? What was he looking at? Um, uh, that's what I thought it was or something for like a photo shoot yeah. or something. Uh not Airbnb, what's some places called? That you rent for uh, a couple hours. This, this, you. Is, this is a, a website that I can't think of it right now, but you know, what are the places you rent out for a couple of hours? I, I don't know. Peer space. Is Peer Space? I can't remember the name of it. But, the people, the but we get what you're trying to say. Yeah. We get what you're trying to say. Go ahead. What is wrong with you, child? I'm talking about these bitches. Oh, <laughs> I'm just saying. I ain't know <laughs> but first of all, they be they, you know, the folks in the comments, and I just feel like people in the comments act like they so damn perfect. They be they was trying to go in on Astro and his way of dressing. Here's my thing: 
Astro ain't shit but 20 or 21 years old. When I was 20 and 21 years old, I couldn't dress for shit. I had just started to get some type of style. When I was 20 and 21, that's when the when the collar shirts and the plaided pants was in style. That's that was what I was trying to get into back then. But even still, I didn't have no no style up until I got into my mid-20s. He at that age where he's trying to find himself. Not everybody gonna be dra- draped and, and all of that down with some designer clothes or some custom shit. Like let some let people grow. You know, give people time. He ain't shit for 21. I was like, yeah, you look at yourself from 10 years ago at any point in your life, you'd be like, like, Ooh. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> like, but like I said, the gays are extra critical of one another, but hate it when other people are critical of us. And they also need to remember that he's coming up. He's young. He's a, he got he's has an apartment and stuff like that. Like he's working. Like let let them like he's gonna get there eventually. Like people are forgetting that. Like come on now, everybody had to share a shot glass. Like they, let's just be real here. Yeah, like, I remember when we was in our early twenties, um, all of us didn't have no damn job. Some of us had to get money from our mom. I remember one time me and my friends with the Taco Bell, we all got a ta- got some tacos and shared that Baja Blast child. Okay. And that's Damn sure we have our own apartment. You know what I'm saying? And he right. got that right now. He got more than a lot of what us did in our 20s. And a lot of what a lot of y'all got, too, while y'all sat around there talking shit. Y'all laid up with somebody. At least he they got his so, own. Like, they be so damn judgmental, <laughs> y'all. Like, I can't. They be too fucking judgmental for me. Like, too judgmental. And I can't take it. But we love Astro. Yeah, we love Astro. Yeah, I love Astro. We love him I mean, over He was here. kind of giving Shanine tease at the end. With that <gasps> heavy coat, he was. I ain't gonna lie, he was. I ain't gonna lie, but I love me some Astro. <laughs> oh, you said shit, day <laughs> day. Because I was not thinking about that. <laughs> somebody, uh, I got the uh, the after show in the back, and somebody was like, "If DeAndre don't come to the reunion, I'm gonna be so irritated." I don't think I'd be surprised if he would. I wouldn't be surprised if he don't come either because he got too much beef with people. Mm-hmm. And he don't like how he portrayed on the show. So he probably don't like how he's portrayed either. So he, that ruined the whole shit. But I guess you ain't going to want to go and be get jumped or whatever. I'm just like, okay. Girl. But see, here's my thing. You can't come on the show being a damn villain and talking shit to everybody. Then get scared and shit when it's time for the reunion. Like, come on. You took on the everybody road to be a me. bitch. Every last one of your confessionals, you read the girls in. Every one of them. So, I mean, you know, it, don't talk about it. Be about a girl. What's up? That's what I'm saying. Like, like if you don't sit your punk ass down somewhere, like, that's the type of shit I'm talking about. You want to talk shit about folks, but you don't want to own up to your shit at the reunion. You don't want to be a held accountable for it. Child, please. That's why you need to come as you are. Don't come on here saying, I'm going to come on here and read the girls. I'm going to come on here and read the girls. Then when you get ready to read the girls, you can't. You can't do it when it's time for you to really read them. So um, anyway, because that's so irritating. I hate I hate people that play the villain but didn't want to be the victim at the same time. This situation with Trey Howard and his daddy, Lord Jesus, that 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 took me out. Mm-hmm. It's it's tough. It's tough. It uh, is a lot of I know a lot of it's it's and it's a shame that a lot of my friends have those same type of relationships with their dads. A lot of us in my friend group have those relationships with our dad. Well, me and my dad are good now, but it's sad that when a father hasn't been in your life, they don't want to take, not even a father, any type of deadbeat relative, whether it be a father, a mother, a grandfather, a grandmother, they don't never want to take any accountability and they put it off on you to be the one to reach out to them all the time. Why I got to reach out to you? No matter how old I get, I'm still the child of the situation. <laughs> People just have that, you know, sometimes they have the perspective. It's like, once you're 18 and you're an adult, I should be able to treat you like an adult and blah, blah, blah. I'm just like. But then at but, the same time, they won't, they feel like they're old respect because they have that certain place in your life. But you, you have don't, to earn that. Though. You have to you earn it. This. You can't just give help me help give birth to me and then I don't see you for 25 years. <laughs> right. right. Like if you ain't right. been no constant in my life at all like that, how the fuck you gonna come around and tell me how how to act or you know 
respect you or say this or say that. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he wasn't trying to hear Trey out. He wasn't trying to hear him out. And then hung up in the man's face. And then hung up in his face. And, and you know, like, as as the child, it's almost like no matter how badly our parents treat us, a lot of times we still yearn for, like, their love, respect, and, you know, for them to be proud of us. And when they don't do that, it's just a hurtful situation to be in. Even though we have, like, all these great things going on in our adult <laughs> lives, like, you know, sometimes we get teleported back to that, you know, young child, young boy, girl, or whatever, that just wants to have the love and support of their dad. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's 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 tough to you know get even though we can kind of see it from the outside looking in from the situation a lot of those situations like that are just like I just ultimately want my parent to be proud of me you know so that's why I can see it's a very very sensitive. But I will say this: Trey don't need him at all. You know what I'm saying? Because he's soaring without him. He's made a name for himself without without the services of his father. He can he can continue on. Like, the more he glows up, the more his dad will want to be around. Watch what I say. Because that's normally how it happens. Absolutely. Always. Yep. Come back. I always believed in you. Bitch. How did you believe in me, bitch, and you weren't there? That don't mean I ain't believe in you. <laughs> that don't mean I ain't believe in you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, how, that's how they always get you. Now let's talk about Dior and this fine ass brother of his, Chad. Oh, dear God. That's all I want to talk about is the brother because that fashion show was tied to. But that brother, <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> Ugh, Lord have mercy, Jesus. I want both. He got all them songs with all them people. Both. He got all them right, songs with people. What? I want both of them right now. <laughs> right now, I'm gonna be smack dab in the middle. I want both of them right now. Oh my god! Not not a. Now, I wonder who big. Ooh, I wonder who big. Ooh, maybe they both the same size. They are brothers. Huh? Mm-hmm. I let it find out. Your whole stuff. So then, when Oliver comes back to Dallas to talk to DeAndre, why DeAndre just sit up there and lied to him? Yeah, just told just a whole bunch of lies. Like we can't see it. Recap what you said. <laughs> Just that was, lie. Was it was production pulling the Potomac for me, like that, because like, that's the same <laughs> shit Potomac did. Like every time Deborah sat up there and tried to lie through her teeth, production came and got her right together. They did the exact same thing. I mean, but if you said it on camera, it's it's right there for us to reference. We ain't, we ain't gotta speculate. We ain't gotta go with the he say, she say. It's on candid camera in 4K. Just gonna lie. No, nah, but see, I think Oliver knew he was lying, but he was still gonna take up for his friend on camera. That's what I think. But Oliver ain't stupid. He know what he's dealing with when it's coming with DeAndre. We all do when we got a friend like that. Let's be honest. Mm, we do. Like, nah, that. you lying. That's why <laughs> right. I'm I can't support this. I can't. Mm-hmm. Exactly, child. He knew. And he came up with a plan to bring everybody together and stuff like that. And then, you know, he asked about the lounge. Because we ain't heard shit about that lounge since the first episode. And, um, <laughs> the first. <laughs> and so, you know, he said, well, when the contracts come, we'll be able to talk about it. Okay, DeAndre. So then, Jet, Astro, and Kesey, I guess they're rehearsing for a performance. Kesey. No, he can rap. Mm-hmm. And then when he started rapping that little LL Cool J love song he had, I'm like, oh, KC. <laughs> Jet Jeff can rap too. I was living for Jet Jeff's um energy. He 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 yeah, was he giving it to rap. me. Yeah, he was giving it to me. I was down for Jet. And I'm here for Astro too. I I see they love and to be real, I felt like y'all could have found the way to make that one mic work. You understand me? Because Nye mm-hmm. told us all we needed was one mic. You understand? <laughs> y'all could have found the way to make that work. It was cute. How y'all mm-hmm. came and met each other and then grabbed the mic and then y'all did what y'all had to do. Like, I liked it, Dad. Like, I, I can't but, wait to see you know, perform. As a performer, it's like, I want, a, I want a second mic. You know, you don't want to have to do all that extra and have petition. They ought to just become a little group. They should be like the Shibuya girls. Shibuya, 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 Shibu
I go by slime. I'm hella uh, fine. I got I'm some dang. niggas, but they ain't mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all of this meeting of the minds. Um, we find out that Sean and Jet made up, which we already knew it. Were, it really wasn't that deep yeah. anyway. Trey Howard was not here for the bullshit. He was not oh, here. Period. Was so Trey in that moment because I would have been looking around like, "What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> why? Why am I here?" And it was look, it was Kiki's like, "Don't go. Don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave me here." No, Kiki sh- didn't have nothing to no say. Like, really was Kiki there? Kiki was just like. No shade, but why is it feeling like the Oliver Twix show oh, in Lord. Dallas? Like, I'm just gonna be honest. Like, I don't, I don't want to see all the Atlanta girls on, on, on Dallas. Like, I just feel like I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm, and, 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 and y'all know I love Oliver. I do. It's no shade to Oliver, but it's just I could have dope without seeing you. Like, it's just it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, that's just what's getting me. Like, I, I, I'm, I, no, no. No, no, I'd have much rather saw Markel come and do why couldn't Markel do that shit? Like he EP. That should have been he, he, Markel coming up there having a meeting in the mass with his with his cast uh folk, you know. That's yeah, what right. I think it should have been. Yeah, Not all imagine, of it. Can you imagine Dario doing that? Who? You said Andario? Can you imagine Andario doing that? Hey, Absolutely uh uh-uh, no. Like I know he Mar- wouldn't. That's why I said Markel. Man, Markel, Markel like, would do, do that either. <laughs> I well, he see, didn't need I to be see, him. I don't want it being Oliver. I can see on Dario right now. Can you just get him at like, yeah, because I, I can't do this. Uh, no, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be over uh, it. Look, I'm over this. I'm over this. I'm over this. Like, we could just wrap it up right now. Like, I, I'm over it. <laughs> no, 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 ma'am. 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 See no, ma'am. Right no, 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 Put on your Mona hat, girl. Mona wouldn't do that. <laughs> what will Mona Scott do? Mona gonna be Mona bitch shit. would not do that. Did you hear me? Everybody, <laughs> we all need a Mona bitch. All right. No, 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 no. Shout Come out out. to Fools Rocks for the together. Mona bitch. Shout out to Fools Rocks right. for the Mona bitch. Right. Come on now. Let's get this together. I really didn't want to be done. Not, the not, Fools Rocks is the same not. Mona bitch in so many different ways. Mona bitch. <laughs> oh, I should be like Mona, bitch. <laughs> Her and that car is iconic. I, I, she don't never need she to leave that record, car. She can't co record nowhere else ever. She can't even get a new car. <laughs> I, I, I said Mona, bitch. <laughs> um. Robert and Trey started sharing pleasantries, child, and I just felt like Trey was not, I mean, Robert was not trying to be pleasant. I just... It's so funny, because she's like, try to say something positive. I feel like you were fake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> not you forgot what you're supposed to do. <laughs> like, he forgot right in that <laughs> second, okay? to the shit. <laughs> Now, he did kind of make me feel away when he said that he found out that his oldest daughter wasn't his. And even though it wasn't his, he stayed on child support. Okay, Robert. I can respect yeah. you for that. I respect that. This is, this is the only, like, thing about that. You really could have just left it and I found out that it wasn't mine. I don't feel like the public mm-hmm. needs to know that you stayed on child support. I feel like you, that was none of our business. <laughs> And then I will agree with that. We ain't had to be in your pocketbook like that. A lot of people was just we like, need I to know. Have done it. It, it, it opened up yeah, the door. you know, we, we ain't need to know that that woman caught a good lick off you. It opened up the door for people to have too many opinions. And I'm just like, ah. Uh, right. You See, like I just did. See, like I just did. I said that woman got a quick lick off your ass, and she did. That's just how I feel. Yeah, women can be but stuck he, queens he too. Wanted to make sure mm-hmm. that the, the child was taken care of, because even though it's not mine, I still, you know, raised her this far. And it's like I get it, but mm-hmm. I'm just like, that mama is a trash. <laughs> yeah, she is trash. trash. Very yeah. much so trash. Uh, I'm gonna take that money too. I told you she got a good lick. No shade. <laughs> Then after that, 
Londi and Trey, they started sharing like absentee father stories, which was very touching. And it led to, you know, Trey going outside and everybody loving on Trey. Great moment of camaraderie, I must say. And then yeah. after that, they go back in and we get right back to the mess. DeAndre and Kesey address their issues. Kesey is a good one because I wouldn't address a damn thing with DeAndre. He would be written off all together. Like you and your friend tried to jump me. Well, y'all jumped me. Like we ain't got nothing to talk about. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He was trying to be, you know, Kesey was trying to be nice about it. But I just know how Scotty is. Scotty will hold a grudge till you die. So it's... <laughs> it's like we have nothing really to discuss. Like I don't Absolutely. Know, you don't fuck with me. They're, what you did to me made no sense whatsoever. So I'm just good off you. And then that's it. <laughs> but see, the thing with DeAndre, when DeAndre and Sean and Astro started addressing their issues, I was just irritated because I'm looking in the chat and all I kept seeing people say is Astro just got involved in the fight just because he wanted to and he had nothing to do with it. But y'all ain't saying nothing about DeAndre Friend jumping in the damn fight. You know what I mean? There, there's, I mean, there's no reason to not. Well, there, there's no need to defend Astro because he laid it out as plain as day. Yeah. People choose not yeah. to see it as plain as day, right? And they just don't yeah. want to because he asks us to open jump. Fine. It's like my friend was getting jumped. I didn't yeah. move until your friend moved. Mm -hmm. Okay, your friend was the one that jumped in, and then it was DeAndre. Like you know, my if it's my friend and my friend's getting an altercation, I'm gonna be his friend. But that's not the point. The point is, <laughs> just because, I mean, like you know when to step in for your friend. You don't jump. You might pull them off, but you know when to step in. Just because your friend gets into an altercation, if it's one on one, especially if y'all just got, if y'all just gotta handle that real quick, do what you gotta do. I ain't going to let nobody kill you, kill you, but I ain't going to jump in because as soon as I do it, then any somebody else going to do friends it. has all the right to lay into me. So it's just like, you can't say, oh, you did the same thing from your actions. Yeah, because everybody <laughs> was making it a thing of, well, Astro bought a plus one and he wasn't supposed to bring a plus one. And but DeAndre bought okay. two things. But Andre bought two bitches. I mean, DeAndre bought two bitches. What you mean? And he was being messy with both of the bitches that he bought. Be clear. The other one was there for the, to start crap between Dior. And right. that didn't work for him. But DeAndre, so like, but DeAndre's thirst buckets, a.k.a. fans, because I don't see how he got any. They all in the damn comments just going in on Astro. And what, what they failed to realize is Kesey was uninvited. But Trey invited Kesey and Trey made it clear right. that he was going to invite him. Right. My, this is Trey's home. And that's Trey so house. Can't bring him to my own house. But that was another thing that annoyed me this episode was that I didn't see none of them speak up. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to have seen Trey Howard say, well, wait a minute, friend. Yeah, you may not have invited him, but it was our shindig and I invited him. I right. would have appreciated that. Just like I would have appreciated when production was bringing in other instances, but it did not come from them people. I was like, why ain't y'all speaking up and calling them out for the BS? And then when Lon Speak D up. started oh. speaking on the situation, he just going at Astro. And right. I'm like, how the fuck you going? I don't understand why you going at him when DeAndre <laughs> started the whole thing. Was, I don't you know, understand. You did the same thing that you did. How are you going to say you don't forgive him, but then you did the same thing? It's like, no, no, no. DeAndre threw the first punch, and it was DeAndre's mm -hmm. plus one that wasn't supposed to be there that got engaged into the uh, mm -hmm. the fight, which then in turn, now you jump in, my friend, now I'm a part of the situation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just linear situation. You can see it from step one to all the way to step three. Like, what what are we missing? Somebody has to it was a setup. It was a setup from the very beginning, and you saw DeAndre walk charge over there to Kesey from the jump. So you knew what he was on. So why you mad? Why are you mad at Andre? Like if 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 Astro says that he can't get past it, that's his right to not get past it. 
Because but, but see, I that, couldn't get past it either. <laughs> that, that's exactly what I was getting into. He got every right not to get past it because at the end of the day, I see how you move. So therefore, right. even though this situation really ain't got, I'm not directly affected by the situation. I see how you move. So therefore, mm -hmm. I don't want to rock with you because I see how you move with other folks. If you're going to move like that with somebody else, then you damn sure going to move like that with me. So therefore, I don't want to fuck with you. I see your weird ass energy. I see how you act. <laughs> I see what type of snake you are. So therefore, I don't want to fuck with you like that. Yeah. I don't see how that point was being missed. Like, I... I That's why I'm just like, Londi is just not inserting himself in the right moments of this you're not on the right side. Mm -hmm. You're not inserting yourself in the right moments. Mm -hmm. It's just all bad for you. Like, it's making DeAndre the victim for me. Like, are you serious? He's no one's victim. Mm -hmm. Please stop. Not in this situation. Or any situation that has been happening so on the show so. since it started. <laughs> so much so, he stirred up all this commotion in five episodes and left. That's some <laughs> Ashley Darby shit. <laughs> Y'all keep reminding me of Potomac and I'm not liking it. That's the same shit Ashley do around there. Stir up drama and leave. Drop tea and leave. Like, that's the same thing. Like, it... Jesus Christ. Well, well I, I guess that was the end, child. I guess that's the end of the episode, to be honest. I ain't really nothing. Yeah, that's it. Because, okay. yeah. We really covered everything. It's some stuff. It's some stuff that I did skip, but you know I ain't want this to be that damn long. We already had to do two episodes, so that's true. But I mean, yeah. we about a, at least a third into the season. Um, I mean, this was a very heavy episode. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we learned a lot about a lot of people. I don't because I know that they Oliver tried to do this situation to make it seem like the cabin trip, but this it just didn't hit. It did. The cabin trip. Um, Absolutely not. And it kind of felt like you were it's like that forced sequel of an already good movie. <sighs> yeah. So, or a reboot of a good TV show. I mean, right. what I would say, there was only one good thing that, that he did say that was very true. It's like when you are talking to somebody and have like have them trying to have like a real, you know, connection or conversation, you do have to see your eyes if you're face to face. Yeah. You can't sit mm. there in front of me with some shades on because it is like I can't connect with you mm -hmm. shades baby. I agree. Bro. Absolutely. When I have my shades on, bitch, I'll be just doing the most. <laughs> <laughs> the way my eyes be rolling to the back of my head. <laughs> see, this is why I can't do no reality show. Because, see, people get mad at me because of the way, like, people get mad at me because of my facial expressions. People get mad at me because I roll my eyes at, at, at stupid shit. I won't be able to, to hide it because even if it ain't got nothing to do with me, you're you going to see me looking like. Right. I couldn't sit there with a straight face. I just couldn't. I couldn't. Like, it's so many instances. I, I'm like, if I was in it, like, that whole, like, that whole Robin and Kesey thing, that really, like, annoyed me. And I was like, look. I would have got up. I would have I would have been like, "Happy birthday, Astro!" But I'm gonna get the fuck, okay? Because it ain't nothing else I can say at this point. But it's relevant. But kudos to Keisty for for showing that he was raised with a mama and not showing his natural black ass mm -hmm. in somebody else's house. Thank mm -hmm. you, Keisty, for showing how to keep your cool in somebody else's house. I appreciate that because I would have just left. I ain't even gonna hold you. Yeah. I would have just he, got up and left. Even though he, he did fight at Trey, at Trey House. Well, he had but, no other I choice. But he really but didn't. He was attacked. He was attacked. <laughs> 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 well, y'all, with that being said, this is the Chasing Dallas panel. Of course, it was the three of us. Tramel will be back next week. Okay. So um, be sure to tune in today. This was fun. As it always is. Oh I mean, yeah, the season's great. It's always great when the season's good. Yeah, because when the season bad, it's not good. It's, it's not good. Um, absolutely. I really not don't good. remember anything from the season three. <sighs> like I really struggle to remember any like. I remember like, Eric oh. James. Eric James, his booty, um, all the tight clothes he used to put on. Um, let's see the tennis racket when he threatened to hit uh Dio with the <laughs> tennis racket. <laughs> <Get up. laughs> 
Yeah, the reunion when Trey Howard cussed out Reese at the oh, end. Oh, Trey Howard let him have it. He let him have it at the end to the point to where Reese just quick. cut that whole motherfucking thing off. Okay, like cut it off. Even though we was pissed, that was iconic. But oh wait, 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 wait! And Reese and Trey, um, Womack getting into it. That was another one that I love to watch. That's another scene I like to watch. That was some funny ass shit. Reese was hurt. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I remember was cussing out the butterball. That's all I remember. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we will see you guys next Thursday. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>